Good afternoon and welcome to Modern ATI. I'm your host, Blind Prime, and for today we will be finishing the series on Snarl. Today we're going to be talking about Snarl's dinosaur mode, the Stegosaurus mode, and of course doing a comparison with the other Dinobots that I have all around me right now. Wow, uh, when we get Swoop, will Swoop even be able to fit on my uh, little platform without these other people? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Hmm. It's going to be tough for Swoop to fit in with all these guys on this. I may have to get a bigger stage. My stage is, uh, well, Grimlock, half your foot is off the stage. Get, get over here. Get over here. Slide over there, guys. Yeah, Grimlock, Grimlock has fallen off. You know, you, you got to, like, you need to just slide over. All right, all right, all right. There you go. There you go. I know you guys are like grief. Now, now Slag is trying to fall off. All right. <laughs> these dino butts are huge. It's just so big. Okay, uh, I haven't done this before, but I'm going to devote this episode to Gary Larson. Because if it wasn't for Gary Larson, I, I honestly wouldn't, I don't think I would have been interested in science and technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Uh, I, I was interested in them, but Gary Larson showed me a way of thinking outside the box and really, you know, getting, getting comedy and in you know, education together in a unique and interesting way that I've never forgotten. And I try to, you know, I try to emulate here on the channel. I, um, Gary Larson lives with me at all times. I, I constantly think of the old cartoons I used to look at. And uh, I, if you've heard me call, talk about Thagomizer a lot, well, that's because, you know, a Stegosaurus has a Thagomizer. And what is a Thagomizer? Well, Gary Larson made this little comic and it was great it was a uh, it was a couple of you know it was a a neanderthal scientist a caveman scientist standing in front of a cave painting with a log stick pointed at a drawing of a stegosaurus and specifically pointing at the sharp bits at the end of the stegosaurus's tail and there's a bunch of other you know neanderthals dressed in lab coats looking at him and he's talking about how this is called the Thagomizer, named after the late great Thag, who got a little too close during his observations. I absolutely love it. And I love the fact that the, the, uh, oh, the dinosaur scientists looked at that. They went, wait, we've actually never named those stupid bones. And I'm glad Gary Larson named the Thagomizer, because if the scientists had named it, they would have come up with some long Latin term that basically meant large, sharp bones protruding from tail, usually used in defense. Uh, like, like that. that's what the Latin would come out to say, in a nutshell. I mean, maybe they would have used less words, but that's basically what the Latin would have said. Instead, we get Thagomizer, which is a a creative name, and I love it whenever I hear creative names in science. They're just amazing. I, I constantly love watching, uh, for instance, uh, New Zealand. New Zealand's rocket program is, is amazing because I love the names of the rockets. You know, like, catch me if you can. I'll be back by Sunday. Things like that. They name these great rockets, all these crazy names, and then you look over at America, and it's like, we're releasing Rocket X-331, blah, 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 Like, that's boring. That's stupid. Name them something fun. <laughs> that's what New Zealand does, and that's what Gary Larson did for the Stegosaurus, and that's why this episode is devoted to Gary Larson, because of the Thagomizer, and how Gary Larson you know, worked with science, and... Uh, I, if you have never picked up a Far Side comic by Gary Larson, what are you doing? Go, you know, do it. Do it now. Look at them up. Look them up. Look, look up the Gary Larson Far Side comics and laugh because, you know, they're just, all of them, uh, they, they, they range, but they're usually really, really good. And they, they're thought provoking as well. You know, if you finish the story in your mind, but anyway. I've now talked probably at least five minutes about Gary Larson, and I haven't even talked about the Dinobots, and that's what this episode's all about. But I wanted you to understand the glory that is Gary Larson and how you know, one, one writer and an artist can, can manage to instill upon you know, millions of people you know, the love of science and comedy. It's, 
It's something amazing, and I absolutely love it. And it's my hope that one day this this channel can help people like Gary Larson's Farside comics help people. You know, it's they're just nice. They're they're nice to to observe and nice to read. I do miss reading them, but uh, I'm sure one day they'll come up with textured comics. All right, uh, let's let's get into the Stegosaurus now, and. Uh, Let's, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove a few of the Dinobots so we have enough room to actually talk about them individually because I'm gonna compare sizes. So we're gonna get Grimlock and Slag out of the way and we'll talk about Sludge and Snarl, my two favorite Dinobots. Sludge, your, uh, your neck is just a little tall. Hi, there you go. Okay, so let's do comparison on them lengthwise, okay? Sludge is definitely longer than Snarl. We line up Snarls tail to Sludge's tail. There we go. Holy crap, Sludge is so much longer than Snarl. There we go. And uh, they are about the same width. Uh, they, they do fit well together. And Sludge is weightier than Snarl. He's definitely got more oomph to him. He was a big guy, even though, you know, he's bigger than Grimlock. He is the biggest Dinobot. Uh, we're going to move the biggest Dinobot over here to the right so that I know not to mess with him. Give me a second right there. Nice and safe. There you go. Okay, next up on the list, let's talk about Slag. And I was thinking about the name for Slag, and somebody commented, like, Slug is just, you're right, Slug is a stupid name for Slag. And I went, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was thinking and thinking, and I'm like, you know, they could have used Slog. Slog is a cool name. That's, it's you know, slogging, and, and, and it's more of a slow, you know, purposeful motion slog. And I think that would work great for a Triceratops. But then I was thinking even harder, and I'm like, wait, I got the perfect name for him. And I don't know why Hasbro didn't use this name. Sledge! Sledge is a great name! Look, look, he's got this huge wide front. You know, Triceratops are known for ramming things and, like, you know, doing stuff like bulls. He's like a sledgehammer of a transformer. So why not use the word sledge? So, you know what? Hasbro, I hope you're watching this, and I hope you change the name from Slug to Sledge, because Sledge is a better name for this guy than Slug. Slug is just trash. Slug is Slug is something like, this guy's weakness is not salt, okay? You can't, you can't be doing that. All right, he's not a squishy thing that's disgusting and gross, and usually is actually a slime mold given sentience. Um, look into slugs, they're kind of weird, and some of them actually are actually just, just individual one-cell organisms that are all working together uh, to do a task, which is just weird, but interesting. You know, science is always cool like that. So let's, uh, let's talk about these guys. Let's compare their sizes. Let's line up the tails. Line all the tails, lining up the tails. And slag, sludge, Sledge, and I like Sledge. Sledge here is longer than um, Snarl, which is a shame. And and I I'm, I'm gonna get to why Snarl is so short in dinosaur mode soon. So we're gonna move Sledge Slag over there to the side, and now let's get out the Grimlock and finally we'll finish doing this. There we go. Grimlock, why are your legs not clicking in place right? That is that's that's annoying. Darn it, Sledge. Uh, Grimlock. Grimlock's legs are just not working right today. I don't think I clicked them in properly whenever I was transforming them, and they're a little loose, but uh, it'll be okay for this video. Uh, let's do this. Let's see. Okay, put the tails together, and Snarl is definitely longer than Grimlock. Finally, he's longer than somebody, but Grimlock's definitely the taller bot. Uh, now let's take a little weight. Grimlock is the weightier guy, but then again, I was just lifting him with my left hand. So let, 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 let's switch them around. Alright, so Snarl. Eh, I, without, I think they're actually about the same weight. So we're going to set Grimlock over here. Yeah, we'll set him over here to the left. He can stand alone. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the uh, sword because I can't find another place to put it. We're just going to set it on Grimlock's leg. Hey, darn it, sword. Grimlock, here's your sword. Seeing as all the media always shows you holding it, for some reason, Snarl never gets to hold his own sword. All right, so that's all the Dinobot comparisons. Now let's talk about this robot. I'm going to talk about the negative 
first. I'm just going to get it out of the way immediately. And the negative for this guy is his rear. Okay, so everything all the way to this, this front, everything all the, you know, all the way to the back legs here is, is excellent. It's wonderful. It's, it's beautiful. Like these, these panels, all, the, all of its stuff, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's a great stegosaurus. And then you get here to the back of the legs, and then you just get this straight down motion into a stubby, 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 the stubbiest tails of the stubbiest tails. Like, I thought Grimlock's tail was stubby, but this guy's tail is stubbier. And I want to talk about that, because it is a shame that, a, you know, a, a dinosaur known for having kind of a longish tail that he can whip around has got the stubbiest tail in the bunch. And I don't know why they did that. Maybe they did it because, you know, they wanted to get that, that nice look when the tail splits apart and sits on either side of the head. But... They could have done something with the core of the robot here and kind of done a, a split, like you know, made it stretch out just a bit more. There could have been some stretching out happening here with some ratchet joints and you know, sinking down and a couple of panels or something. But um, yeah, the Thagomizer isn't the greatest Thagomizer. They don't even have a, a couple of them sticking straight up. It's got four uh, teeth to it and... Uh, Apparently, because of safety reasons, they rounded the teeth down at the top, so they're not even pointy, which is a shame. Yeah, I wish they were pointy. But yeah, it's it's not the greatest Thagomizer in the world, but as it's the first Thagomizer that I've received, is my first Thagomizer, I like it. You know, it's a good Thagomizer. And that's the negative on him. Honestly, that's the, other than the fact that the head here doesn't have any sort of articulation or motion. It's, it's a very stationary head because of how the transformation goes. But it, you can open and shut the mouth. And the mouth does hold glass effect. If I can get my thumbnail in. There we go. Yeah, you can open and shut the mouth and have him say things like Silesium Salami, you know. Silesium Salami. <laughs> things like that. That's great. Uh, that's the negatives on Snarl here. I don't really have any other negatives. Oh, it's a little short like this. Uh, so, what are the positives of Snarl? Now, the positives of Snarl are a lot. Okay, first off, he's got articulation in all of his legs. Okay, his, his front legs are very stiff, but they still articulate. And his back legs, um, being part of his uh, arms, actually have some good articulation as well. But because of the way the back tail works, you, you do have to be careful when articulating. Um, he, you know, you can't have him, I mean, actually, if you just wanted to, you could spin these two up here like that, and then he'll just rest on his tail. Yeah. That, uh, that's, that's fun that you can actually articulate all the arm, you know, all of his uh, legs in dino mode. I like that. I, I do wish that these feet had actually a little more stability to them. <coughs> his dino, excuse me, his dino feet are a little loose and hollow on the back ends. The front dino feet are excellent, though. There's no hollowness. There's a little waffling inside that I can feel, but that's it. Um, so that's the articulation he's got. You know, mouth closes and opens, and then... The hip, the, his hips move for his front legs. They move for the back legs. And nice thigh action, knee action for both of them, and articulation in both feet. Uh, well, not articulation in the front feet. The front feet just have a knee, and that's it. But it's not bad. It's not bad. This is a wonderful, wonderful little transformer. And let's see if I got anything else I can compare him to. Let's put this paper back. I don't know why that paper keeps falling over. And, uh, Oh, it's pipes. Man, we got pipes here. Look at the pipes. We can do a little size comparison with pipes. Pipes goes from the back of the foot to the front of the foot. Like, the back of the back foot to the front of the front foot. Uh, is there somebody else that we can do a little size comparison with? Uh, ooh. Where's your... Uh, oh, there he is. Cool. We've got Warpath with the parakeet. Warpath is uh, the same length. You know, because my, my, you know, the microbots. The mini bots, I mean, I mean micro bots, I don't know. And here's Beachcomber. Beachcomber! Oh, with your rubber wheels. Love my Beachcomber. All right. Um, Beachcomber here is wow. That's 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 really good. That is really good. And I am 
I'm excited about this this snarl because he fits so well with everything else. Yeah, it's just ah, it feels perfect. It's like yeah, that is actually the right size of snarl compared to Beachcomber. That's just neat. Ah, this snarl is such a fun guy. I am loving this snarl every moment of it. Uh, like I said, the only negative I found for this snarl is that back tail. Otherwise, it's it's excellent. So before I end today, let's go over the sculpt workflow for him. And let's talk a little bit about that, and then that'll be it. Uh, siege pegs, we'll, uh, siege ports, we'll talk about those real, real quick. One on his back, and then one on each of his thighs, and that's uh, his back thighs, and that's it. Now, three siege pegs. Okay, Artic uh, sculpt wise, his head is very smooth. It's a uh, very nice feeling, but that's all it's got. He got some nice eyes there that are inset into the head. And, oh, they actually textured the eyeballs, so there's actually a roundish eyeball in there. That's neat. And uh, you open the mouth up, and you don't really get any interior just you know, uh, field textures here, which is sad. There is a, there's a lot of waffling and hollowness inside of his mouth, so we're just going to close on that. All right, coming up his back from his mouth, we've got these uh, the, the stegosaurus's little bony protrusions that come up either side of the back. They did an excellent job sculpting every single one of these things. They each have different textures to them. They each feel like they're individuals. It's it's really nice. Uh, I do like that. That is that, Those are some good sculpts. They could have just put regular plastic up here, but instead they went about sculpting it nicely. That is some good sculpts. All the way to the tail, every one of these little, little bony protrusions on the stegosaurus is sculpted very well. Uh, coming up between them, down his back, we get some really nice metal paneling textures coming up. Because remember, this is a dinosaur, but not like a Beast Wars dinosaur. So it's a cyborg dinosaur, an android dinosaur. It's a robot dinosaur. Uh, coming all the way up, we get some uh, piston action going on there or something. And uh, yeah, there's the siege peg. And that's about it for his back. Not, much, not many textures going on, but there's enough texture to you give you the feeling of a robotic dinosaur, and they did a good job. Though the back of the tail, the tail section is the least textured right there. You got the thagomizers that are sticking out, but they didn't put any sort of textures on the tail itself. The, the tail is just, on the sides of the tail, there's textures. There's really good textures on the sides of the tail, but there are no textures on the inside of the tail. It's something I didn't mention on my robot review, which I should have mentioned, and I didn't mention in blind formers, which I should have mentioned, is I'm very happy with the fact that the inside of these tails isn't waffled. Like, when you split this tail apart, there's no waffling on the inside. That's nice, perfect. It, it's it's wonderful. I wish they had done that with Laser Optimus's trailer. I tell you that straight up. Uh, coming over here to the sides. So that is going all the way down. We'll talk about the sides coming up because the sides are mirrored on each side. So we, don't, we can just talk about one. Oh, hey, on the tail, there's some vent action. Ah, oh, I love me some vent action. Okay, coming up to the back thighs, we've got a little inset area there. We've got this huge blocky thigh that feels like you know it can it can move mountains. It's such a blocky, heavy duty thigh. It's great. He's got thunder thighs. And we come over here to the uh, some great textures there. Uh, and uh, but yeah, once again, you know, these textures are very similar. Oh wait, there's another siege peg right there. So he's got five. Uh, these textures are very similar to if you had made a ro uh, Robot Stegosaurus out of steel or something. Coming over here to between his legs, you know, his back leg and his front leg, we've got some more unique textures. Oh, there's more vent action going on right there. More vents. Gotta love the vents. Robots gotta cool the interiors, you know. Come over here, we've got more stuff going on. Um, it's a smorgasbord of textures. I tell you that straight up, it's wonderful. All these wonderful little textures. And it makes you you get an understanding of what this thing is, and it is a nice thing. This is a great, great Dinobot. This is a wonderful addition to the Studio Series 86 line in all three modes. And um, finally, grading wise, I'm gonna have to give the Stegosaurus mode a a 9.5 out of 10. You know, it it barely misses out on the 10 and that's because i think the tail is too short like i gotta say that the tail is too short uh they they should have i mean they they made it seem like he had he was crunching his tail inwards towards his, his rear legs uh, and i do wish they had figured out a way to make that tail click out like on a ratchet or something it would have been nice to have a 
a uh, one of the Dinobots that had a prehensile tail, especially the one whose no whose tail is known for 